You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Shall we begin? Let's begin now. It's that time again. It is high noon here in Southeast Texas, and this is the Ticket Stub. We are Connorless today, so you're listening to me. I'm Chris Appel on the show, and along with me in the studio today is Dick. Yay! Yeah, I didn't do too bad with that. That's my first no, time leading in. No. Not bad at all, Chris. No, so... Welcome to today's show. Absolutely, and don't Try. forget to check us out on our social media, which is uh, IRLoneStar.com slash TTS. We've also got our YouTube channel, the Ticket Stub Podcast. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at, at the underscore Ticket Stub on Twitter. And I also have a personal Twitter I'm kind of getting into. Yeah. And that is at the You're Going C- down that tunnel, huh? I sure am. At the, Bird's Nest. Yes, the Rat's Nest. What's a bird? Because Twitter. Oh, yeah. Tweet, tweet. That makes sense. <laughs> but it's at the. Uh, What's your? <laughs> check out my, I, I totally forgot. I forgot it. Uh, that uh, at the C L A P P E L. That's my handle. Okay, there you go. Okay. Also, we want to remind uh, our new listeners, if you're a new listener today, or an old listener, we have a message line that runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Nine three six six four seven. 3776 is the call-in message line for the station. So call in, leave a message. Uh, I know that's the way we've been giving away our tickets, and there's really no uh, rule on that for right now. You just call in, leave your name, and like a le- uh, most importantly, leave your leave a message because a lot of people call in and just hang up. So you can comment on any podcast you've been listening to. We got, we can't play it on the air for the next show, but you have to be you know nice about it. You can't just start calling in and using curse words and stuff. Yes, you got to be do that. Got to be radio friendly. And uh, a new thing what we've been doing too is our podcast version that's on iTunes, Google Play, it's, uh, drop on Friday mornings at 8 a.m. on the dot. So if you uh, can't always listen to us live in the studio at Connors FM 104.5, not Connors, that's Conroe's FM 104.5, <laughs> 106.1 local here in the Conroe area or worldwide at IRLoneStar.com or the app Lone Star Night Radio. Uh, we do have a podcast on iTunes and Google Play. So make sure to subscribe to that so you don't miss a beat. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a great show last week. If you didn't uh, didn't hear it, it was with uh, film director Travis Champagne. He stopped by to visit with us in the studio. Prima Donna yes, Films. Yes, Prima Donna Films. It was a really great show, so check it out on YouTube. It's archived on there. But today's show, we got a lot of cool stuff we're going to be doing. Yeah. We're going to rapid fire some news. We've got some movies that we're going to rewind. Can we, can we slow down the news? It's not, Connor's not here. And we, we we're going to have... slow it down. We have one more. There's usually three. We got four topics. There you go. Yeah, so and, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that because yeah. one of them I did find, and I thought it was quite hilarious. <laughs> so... And then uh, Dick and I are going to play a game of Movie Seen It. It's an old board game. Not old, I guess, from the, the 2000s. But we're going to try to try to play that. Because i got to redeem myself from the Golden Globes. That's true. I can't believe I won that. Yeah, you did. And I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. TV. TV. That's where you got it. Yeah. That's where you got it. Well, I mean, the, the Oscars is going to be... I, the Oscars are going to run the same way. I really hope they mess up a bunch like they did last year. Oh, yeah. Best picture yeah. mess up? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've also got our grand ticket giveaway towards the end of the show. And then, this is pretty cool. We're going to announce this for the first time. We're going to have a Valentine's Day show Yeah. with our significant others. Oh, yes, Yes, we so are. my wife will be there. Uh, Dick's fiance will be there. And Connor's girlfriend will be here. And we'll, I'm sure we'll play something like those old uh, match games you see. I'm, I well, I know I talked to Holly about it, and we can kind of do the, the stereotypical couple interaction of like how we watch movies because movies are the perfect introduction to a new relationship because you don't have to talk to each other, and you can then you can talk afterwards and kind of go in depth on each other's characters and stuff like that. But uh, now that we're all kind of seeing somebody, like I do not like watching movies with her. I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to say that right now, and I'm really interested to see what, how she feels about it. Because uh, usually she picks movies that are on the other end of the spectrum, mm-hmm. and she, I bet she she just hates my movies. So it's really hard to find a. movie. Are y'all like opposites? Like you pick the Hallmark and the romantic movies, and she picks the action movies and stuff like that. No, uh, her her choice in movies are the movies that I always feel in the theater that I'd never see. 
even with the movie pass. Like, I'm like, I really have no interest in seeing that movie. But we do have a similarity when it's, like, really bad movies, but not Hallmark bad, but it's more of, like, uh, like Unforgettable. Yeah. Or is it Unfor- Unforgetful or whatever that movie we, I reviewed last last week with Katherine Heigl and yes. Rosie Dawson yep. doing the whole cheating thing. Like, yep. we both, that, that kind of stuff we'll get on because it's, like, <laughs> it's pretty funny. But she likes scary movies and stuff, and I do not. So that's... Okay. Okay. But I did. I sent you a message on the movie we're going to watch. So, of course, I'm with her, and we're watching uh, The Bachelor, right? Mm-hmm. And The Bachelor movie uh, came on during a commercial. I'm trying to find what it was called. And basically what it said, advertised itself as, it's just like Nicholas Sparks, but this isn't made by Nicholas Sparks. <laughs> so Holly immediately goes, I really want to see that movie. That's what we're going to see. And I was like, okay, for the podcast. Yeah. I forgot what it was called, though. Life After Her or something? Something like something that. Like I'm that. going to look, I'm gonna look it up. We have it at up. the theater starting tomorrow. So, so oh, yeah, let me look that up. Yeah. Keep talking. Yeah. All right, well, we've got Rapid Fire News. So... You know, I've mentioned this on the show a few times, that I'm a big James Bond fan. And we've got Bond 25 is coming out November 8th, 2019. So we're, we're just over a year away on that uh, that release. Forever but, My Girl. Forever My Girl, yes. yeah. Okay. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be uh, Daniel Craig's uh, last James Bond movie. But who knows? You know, everything's always up in the air. No, why do you think this is such – because, uh, you know, usually when the James Bond transition and – controversy comes around like what's going to happen with james bond yeah uh this time it isn't the production company it sounds like like, like that's that's choosing this it's more like daniel craig's like i'm tired of this well generally that's how it happens but well, not with pierce brosnan i think he was he was let go they went in a different direction that's what i'm saying that yeah. that was the production like hey we made a lot of great movies with you but die another day <laughs> Uh, it was kind of the end of your Bond career. <laughs> I guess so, That yeah. was a start. But, you know, I, I kind of laughed at that because why would – I imagine financially he's getting paid more and more for every movie. Well, it's a very it's very physical, and, I mean, he really beats himself So basically you're telling me he wants to get fat? Uh, maybe. I don't know. you got to stay in shape every couple of years. you got to get yourself – For an actor, I'm shape. just saying because he's like, oh, it's too yeah. much for me. Yeah. But – Well, who knows? I mean, you know, there's, should... there's probably always a price on – on everything, I would Well, think. they need to wild card it and have him be M or something, and then a woman's 007. Oh, no, no. Okay, now Barbara Broccoli. Make her a bisexual. Yes, Barbara Broccoli, producer of the James Bond movies. Our trend. She, what's, how can we. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry, continue talking. Wait, okay. So she came out and she said that anything is possible. There could be a black bond, a female bond, or even a gay bond. She did say that. This is a recent interview that she said this in. Man, imagine they did a gay bond. That'd be the that'd be the funniest. I don't know. I would laugh. I don't know because it's different. And <laughs> yeah, they, but they can't. They, I, you know, you got to go back to the source material, and there is, you know, nothing in the source material like the Ian Fleming book. Yeah, that's even remotely like that. I mean, I understand well, about being, well, you know, politically correct in in times today. Well, we had I had this discussion with a film buddy of mine, and it's funny that they have to ask the question. Or have the incentive to change it up from the source material. Because to me, my, my argument is if the source material and you're making a movie about James Bond, why do you need to change it? Like why – like there's there are certain aspects right. that you could add, but like you don't really – that's not what Bond is. Now it's yeah. not Bond. Now you're just going on your own thing and right. might as well be calling it you know, the Kingsman right. 4 there's or whatever. plenty of other venues to do that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, and that's one thing I always wonder because it's not – Bond has always been – that's what made it famous. Yeah. With Sean Connery opening scenes with a woman and then closing scenes with the woman. It's kind of a – it turns into a joke almost. Yeah. And uh, so I, I don't know. I feel – I don't know if I'd like the movie because they're just – it's kind of like doing 21 Jump Street. I was very upset that they made it a parody yeah. of what the original TV show was because the TV show was real serious. I, th- I think that I'm with most of – all of the Bond fans, and I say that they should not do that at this point. I would stick to the – how the, the character was originally envisioned I think is a good idea. But the actors who have been named as possible replacements, okay. uh, we've got uh, – I sent it to you. Uh, Michael Fassbender, Jack Houston. I don't know who that is. Tom Hardy, Aiden Turner, he was in The Hobbit. He was like the lead Hobbit guy in, in The Hobbit. Uh, Tom Hiddleston, uh, James Norton, Idris Elba, and Jamie Bell. That's who The Sun put out, The Sun newspaper in uh, the UK. Uh, but Tom Hardy has three to one odds. I'm not, uh, I'm not totally sold on that. And I did a Twitter poll as well, and Tom Hardy won the Twitter poll well, as t- well. 
I think the argument with Bond, though, is what age can he be? Well, Bond is about 40 years old. Has it always been like that? Yeah. Yeah. I think, so whatever actor is around that age. And I actually want to throw another actor into this mix, if I might, because I read. Vin recently, Diesel. Uh, oh, yeah, Vin Diesel. Oh, yeah, yeah. We know that. how much I love him. Yeah. Uh, but I watched a film I'm going to review it in my rewind called uh, Parallel. Okay. It's a British film came out, came out in uh, 2016. And there's an actor in there, uh, Daniel Westwood. And I thought he was really good in this movie. And there were moments in the movie that he came off like James Bond to me. There's one particular scene, which I'll get into later. But I thought it was, you know, he he really kind of struck me as that. So I think he should, at the very least, get a screen test for Bond. Because they do that. When they're going to, if you're going to find a new James Bond, they bring you in. You got to read scenes from other Bond movies, stuff like that. So I would like to see that, even though we're not privy to those screen tests. But maybe he could just do some on YouTube so I could see it, because I'd really, really love to check that out. But So he's another actor, I think, you know, would be interesting, you know, at least to be, you know, auditioned. Well, they do, they do have a, a different creative angle when they made the new James Bond mm-hmm. films. And then they kind of went to who James Bond was. Instead of him just being the, the stereotypical player, gizmos and fun plot and things like that, they went more into, like, why is he so you know, angry or yeah. things yeah. like that. Where did he come from? Much more meaty acting role, yeah. Yes. So what do you think they're going to do with the new one? You think they're just going to go back to that? Uh, I don't know. You know, I heard Christoph Waltz is not coming back for this one, but who knows, to play Blofeld again because they kind of left it open where mm-hmm. he could do that again in this next one. But it doesn't look like they're going to do that. Um, so I, I don't know. You know, my vote after Daniel Craig, I think Michael Fassbender, somebody I've always really liked, so I think he would be good, but here's the kicker that I really, really would love to push this out there. I think they should set the movie in the 1960s and make it a period piece and that'd just be, start really over cool. again in the 1960s. Because with every Bond, with every actor, it seems like they try to top uh, each movie before it until mm-hmm. it ends up becoming so fantastical that it's not believable. You mean like Die Another Day? Like Die Another Day, yes. The Roger Moore ones, there was a couple in there that were like that. But with the 60s, you know, you you can simplify the plots down. You don't have to use as much special effects. There's there's a lot of period pieces out, you know, from the 60s and stuff like that that are really good with not a whole lot of special effects. So I think that'd be an interesting way. Well, they could do, they just go back to the standalone series where there's a little connection between the two, like with the characters, but the plot isn't determined by you have to watch the first one to get the second one and get the third one. But I don't know. Like I think a lot of people, the new movie goers would be confused because they grew up with Daniel Craig, James Bond, where they think yeah. it's a, like a, a full story trilogy or whatever it is now. What is it? There's four movies? There's two, three movies. Uh, the, well, the, the Daniel Craig I was four. Four. This will okay. be five, I believe. So, I mean, I don't really know what they decided to do. But I think it's going to be funny because we're always going to have a Bond. I, I don't yeah. ever see the Bond ever going away. No, that's they'll, a good thing. They'll, this new one will be crappy. and They'll stop making them for 10 years, and then 10 years later they'll make another one. Yeah. That's really what they'll end up doing. So it's it'd be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Uh, all right. Second topic, rapid fire news, Hollywood and politics. And basically the question is, should people in the entertainment industry uh, – be involved in politics, like through Twitter or Facebook or something like that. Well, I mean, I think everyone's their individual, and that's what Twitter kind of gives a voice of who they are and gives them a platform. I think it's kind of silly to do it, mainly because your career could be shifted 10 years later. I mean, I think that's happened in all political or controversial subjects, if you give your opinion on anything. Yeah. Especially on Twitter, like, just don't do it, because five years later, like, look what you said. Yeah. Taken out of context, of course. Well, my, my thing is, in the entertainment industry, they're there as an escape. They're the people that we go to mm. to watch you well, know, movies or, or, or well, something majority to take us away is. from that kind of majority stuff. Majority of it is. But a lot, there's a lot of people who do roles that they see as impactful on the social, I guess, critique. And, I mean, some people are, I, I don't know on the top of my head who would be known for, like directors and things like that, but... I think there's room for it, but I also think there uh, there's certain there's it's too to me as a business person to be too dangerous. I would not advise anybody to right. do it, just because you're going to lose following and things like that. So you like think that. you think it diminishes their brand a little bit by doing depends it. on what the, what the scenario is, yeah. and I mean I think it, it, I think it hurts a lot of people too if they're known for this behavior 
and I don't really don't know the day to day life of a Hollywood person, but I imagine there are certain people who favor that kind of behavior and like, oh, let's make this movie together. Like I imagine that's why the post was made. I really do. I really mm-hmm. think those band of actors and actresses get got together and they really wanted to make a reflection piece about today's and climate and political climate, but they wanted to tell it in a story that was kind of mimicking what was happening. But, you know, at, at this already happened, so they did the post. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, to me, it's like, you know, you, you want to follow actors and stuff that, that you've known for a long time, and then you get on their Twitter and you see that, you know, all their They're politics. Crazy. Well, no, I think it's very dangerous sometimes. Because well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I would not advise it because you have a, yeah. you're a fan of somebody and you find out, oh, this guy really hates. You know, the brown M&M or something like that, or yeah. red M&M, or like, oh, man, I can't believe this guy. can't See, follow him anymore. It, it, it wouldn't bother has this me. Hap- has this happened to you? No, Do you have no. an actor on top of your head that you will not see? Well, there's a – no, no. The, whatever they say in their political life, I it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. I still respect them as, a, as an actor and as an artist. Uh, but I just think there's people out there that may be susceptible to, like, Kim Kardashian followers, okay? And anything she does is, like, super golden. And she's not political at all. She doesn't say anything about that. Well, I guess I'm one of them because I follow her on Twitter. But uh, it, so people who will just, you know, wait with bated breath on every word that you say. Yeah. You know, it's you can influence people maybe in a bad way who might not be able to think for themselves or there's way too into you to really be able to judge the this, this situation. Well, I think there's a way to manipulate it with – Hollywood and social media and politics, but then again, you're you're neglecting in another area once you choose a side. And you know, as history has told us, ten years later, it might be favoring the other side for an unknown reason. Like especially like the Me Too movement and stuff. Like it's kind of interesting where I bet Hollywood doesn't know what, who's next. Yeah. Because I mean, I think the Aziz Ansari scenario. Mm-hmm. That, I don't know if I pronounced his name right, but uh, his scenario really brought it to light. Where it's like, no, this isn't that big of a deal for this case and that's what's now we're going to do it case by case or how's Hollywood going to do it like for example yeah. Kevin Spacey do you see Kevin Spacey ever working again or Harvey Weinstein ever working again I bet he's working right now yeah but we just don't know I mean I don't know what I don't know how the world works I bet they're doing something yeah uh, but maybe Kevin Spacey I'm not I think Harvey Weinstein would be difficult for him to come back from that in this in this venue I mean maybe he'll have like a car dealership or something yeah he looks like a car dealership yeah. kind of guy to you. is that <laughs> yeah, what you're trying maybe. to say that's pretty funny. But uh, we do have to be going to break real quick. We are live right now, Rock I seen from downtown Conroe. You're listening to The Ticket Stub here on IRLinstar.com. We're here every Thursday at noon o'clock. Thanks for joining us. We'll be right back. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's community radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. Welcome back on the Ticket Stub. We are here live in downtown, beautiful downtown Conroe, Texas. Talking about Hollywood and politics was our last segment that we were, that we were uh, doing. Yeah, I'm terrible at this. See, we need Connor. He's the guy that always reads this. a piece of paper, too. Yeah, Yeah. I'm reading a piece of paper. That's terrible. Well, uh... Well, we will continue with our rapid-fire movie news. So, Quentin Tarantino is making a Charles Manson movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Thoughts? Just silence? Yeah, I don't... Just just a grunt. Well, that kind of announcement, I don't... That's like, okay. I don't know. Do you think he would make a good Charles Manson? Oh, he play. He's playing Charles Manson. I believe Manson? he is. Yes, yes. 
Oh, I have no idea. Like that's the kind of actor you have no idea until you see the movie. Yeah. Well, you know my feelings on Quentin Tarantino, so I'm not interested in seeing it. Oh no, I'm. I mean, the story itself is. I mean, I'm not really. I don't know. They've already done that. I guess. <laughs> they've already done a Manson movie. Yeah. Have they? I'm pretty sure they I have. I don't remember. Hmm. I thought they. Well, I know they're coming out with like three of them. Oh, are they? Yeah. Well, there's a Ted Bundy one with I think uh, Zach Efron is playing Ted Bundy. I think. Well, I think also, yeah, there's a couple people. Uh, well, I'm looking at Matt Smith, who, who I'm just, I just looked up Charles Manson movies. And, yeah, there's like two or three movies in the works. Matt Smith from the Doctor Who. Okay. He's going to play him. Man, this guy just looks funny. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think that kind of stuff is, that's what the movie buzz. Like when Quentin Tarantino Tino, you know, makes an announcement, people just love tacking on to like what he's doing. Like remember when Hateful Eight uh, became a script? Yeah, because I think it started where he wrote like he d- wasn't gonna do it. He wrote kind of the intro and he put it up on the internet. I'm trying to remember what happened the timeline. Yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, "I don't want to make a movie of it." And then, of course, he made a movie of it probably because he had nothing else to do. And so I thought he was retiring. Is this yeah. his last one? I hope so. I hope <laughs> you so. really don't. I, like I really don't. I don't like like really, really not a fan. All right, moving. Well, I, well, we'll move on. Yeah, we'll move on. Probably one of the funniest things I found this week is Saudi Arabia's movie ban has been lifted, uh, and of course, the first movie that was shown in theaters was the Emoji film. That is crazy. Our Emoji movie. I think it's called the Emoji movie. <laughs> but yes, it is pretty crazy. Uh, if you didn't know that they've been banned, movie the, the movies haven't been banned, but movie theaters have been banned. Mm. So it's kind of different. Like it wasn't like no one could watch TV there or anything. But uh, it's just funny that that's the first movie that they aired and or showed in the theater. And I don't. Why? Well, Why? Well, I don't understand the logic behind that choice. Unless it's like, see, you guys haven't been missing anything. You know that you want to watch movies now. Well, this is what you get. So you didn't miss anything. Like the government kind of being like, well, we were doing you a favor, something like. Well, I just wanted to do this real quick. The movie made four times its budget, though. Oh, that is successful. So that's a success. Well, you know, everyone always says, oh, it's Hollywood accounting. So no one really knows how much money they made. But that was a movie I saw. It was really good. I think everyone needs to watch it. Like, take your kids, <laughs> take your grandma. Man, that movie was... It was just one giant ad. It was hilarious yeah, yeah. how bad that was. Do they even... Are there emojis in Saudi Arabia? Like, I don't know how they... I guess... Are you going to look it up? I'm look. <laughs> they have cell phones, right? I don't. I don't know. I'm not familiar. Well, with they're the people. Area. Well, uh, well, I know they're people. I'm just kidding. I, I have no <laughs> idea. I can't answer that because even in the article that I read in Newsweek, they did, they were unsure if women and men were allowed to watch the film together over there. Okay. Uh, but yeah, but apparently more than half the Saudi population is age 25 or younger. Wow. So of course they want to see movies and things like that and. Uh, they're trying to diver- diversify the Saudi's economy away from the oil dependence. Well, they're just not realizing that they should do that. So they're doing it through uh, cinema. I guess. I mean, I'm, they start making movies, I guess. But yeah, the Emoji movie, you need to check it out. Yeah. I can't believe you haven't watched it yet. Because, <laughs> you know, going on the politic, you know, segueing from the last news bit here, uh, T.J. Miller is known, like, if you just look him up, and that's how I knew going into this movie, because I read an article, because I had no idea what the the motion movie was, but I had to go see it. So I look it up, and apparently when he quit, or fire quit, whatever you want to call it, from Silicon Valley, which he's known for, that was his main current show on HBO, he talked about he really wanted to get into films that change the social structure and the social viewpoint of people, aka movies against Trump, movies against those kind of people. And I, I had to laugh because this was his first movie, and like he t- talked about how he chose this movie in similar fashion. That's why he wanted to do the Emoji movie. And okay. I'm sitting there watching the Emoji movie, thinking this in my head because he's the main voice actor in the movie. He plays Jane, but uh, yeah. it's just funny. To me. I had to laugh. I was like, "Really? This is this is how you're going to spend your time trying to change the world? <laughs> is being in the Emoji movie?" Yikes. And so, uh, but yeah, yikes, yikes is yeah. right. <laughs> But moving on, let's talk about our movie rewinds. Yeah, we're going to rewind some movies here. So uh, I'll go first. That's all right. No. No, it's not. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah go okay. ahead. Um, well, I watched a movie called Parallel, uh, which is a British film. It came out in 2016. It was directed by, and I'm going to massacre this person's name, Aiva Maxilite. 
Uh, I believe that's... See, the problem is you had question in your tone. You just need you know, to steamroll through the name. Steamroll through the name. That's what you do. Don't yeah. be apologetic. You don't care. Yeah, you don't care you about just, pronunciation. Just go. Yeah. And it was produced by Alexander Cooper. Uh, but it's basically the story is uh, two people, Heather and Neil, uh, played by Faye Sewell and David McGowan, meet each other at an office party, and they fall in love. And while they're out on this uh, day date, Heather meets a psychic medium called Maclis. That's his name. Uh, he's played by the wonderful Brian Carter. This guy's really cool. Uh, he isn't your ordinary psychic because he has the ability to show people their other self or their parallel. It's kind of like looking into a mirror, but that like other person's your negative side. Um, so he shows uh, both Heather and Neil their parallel, and Heather kind of becomes addicted when she meets this guy, like through her other self named Roy, and that's played by Daniel Westwood, the guy we talked about earlier. Um, so, but I really like this movie because it's an intriguing idea, like to have an alternate self who's bad. Well, how'd you watch it? First of all, I watched it on Am- Amazon streaming. It okay. was on there, and you can buy it and rent it on there. But it reminded me of an episode of the old Star Trek series called Mirror Mirror, like the episode. You talking about Next Generation? No, the old, the old one with Kirk and Spock. There's, it's like a transporter malfunctions, and Kirk and Spock get switched with their evil counterparts from okay. uh, from another dimension. So, but this is done. Th- this movie's it's done in a more interesting way. But everybody, I really, everybody's really good in this movie. I particularly liked uh, Daniel Westwood as Roy and Brian Carter. You know, he's really cool. Uh, Daniel Westwood has just got this coolness and swagger about him. It just seems to come naturally. Um, there's a scene where he's like pretending uh, to be like a realtor, where he's checking out this guy's apartment to see if uh, he's, uh, you know, that you can sell it or not. And he changes accents around, and it just that particular scene gave me a little bit of a James Bond vibe there. So that's why I brought it up earlier. But Brian Carter playing the psychic, that guy, he really hasn't done a whole lot of stuff, but he is a fantastic actor, and I really think that he could flourish. Like on a, a series TV show, like a Doctor Who or something like that. It seems like he'd be really good at that. And, of course, there's a unique cameo by uh, the producer of the movie, Alexander Cooper. He was really good in the scene, and uh, he reminds me of, like, a young Phil Collins, which isn't an insult because I love Phil Collins. This is my favorite, my favorite pop star is Phil Collins. So, But of, overall, the movie is wonderfully acted, written, and directed extremely well. They had almost no budget, it looked like, but it was directed really well. And it's rare that, like, an independent, low-budget movie will deliver on so many levels as this film does because it, it really does. It's a very interesting story. Uh, but I think these guys, they just need money. They need a lot more funding behind their movies because the writing is solid and the acting is solid and the directing is really good. Um, I think if they, they had a, a bigger budget, they could really crank out some good films. So Parallel on Amazon Streaming, I definitely recommend it. Okay. Well, that's, uh, it's free if you have Amazon Prime. So that's cool okay. and stuff like yep. that. Just to let people know, uh, and they can look it up online. I know what, there's a lot of other movies called Parallel uh, or c- certain creative arts. So this is 2016. The way they know it's right. here. Yeah. But uh, the movie I saw, I saw two movies. I saw the new Pirates of the Caribbean, and I funny story about that. It's available on Netflix. I didn't know it was the new one, the brand new one. I kind of like lost track of what happened after the first one. Yeah. And so when I jumped into it, because I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that movie was really fun. Let's see what this one is. Well, apparently this is like the fifth one. And so it has some backstory to it. And I was yeah. I was kind of lost a little bit. But overall, uh, I'm gonna, that's not my movie. But I just want to let people know that that's, it was a movie I watched. I thought it was kind of funny that you, know, you skip. It's kind of like watching Star Wars episode like three. And yeah. then just, that's the one you start with. But uh, the movie I watched is called Vision, Vengeance. I love story. It okay. is on Netflix also, and it is a movie directed by Johnny Martin, and it features Nicolas Cage. He's pretty much – and Don Johnson. Don Johnson's oh, in Don it. Oh, Don Johnson's in Don it. Don Johnson's in it. Wow. Uh, the movie itself, it's funny. You're like reading about it. Basically, it started with uh, – Nicolas Cage wanted to direct this movie, and he didn't have time for it. So he, he gave it to uh, Johnny Martin, and Johnny Martin has done a lot – he's been, been a big producer – as a stunt man, like he was a stunt person in Titanic. Uh, he's uh, the other movies he did this year. He's worked with some really big actors too, like Al Pacino, and uh, I forget I can't pronounce this guy. Carl, uh, we had Carl Urban and all those kind of uh, different folks like that. So he's been in the game for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so outside that, the movie itself was written horribly, uh, and I, <laughs> I say that with I'm trying to be nice because it fell so flat. The the story starts with. 
A Gulf War veteran seeks vengeance against those who assaulted a single mother. And the pacing of the movie was just real flat. It it literally was that. That was the movie. There was no climax. There was no uh, interesting background. It just literally was Nicolas Cage killing people. But it wasn't cool. It wasn't it like wasn't it wasn't cool. Well, not, when I say cool, that's cool, I meant more of like the st- the style of filmmaking wasn't like he just literally walked in, and shot a guy in the head, and then left, and that was the scene. And I was <laughs> like, oh, okay, okay. Well, the one thing I love about movies like this is they try to get you so invested emotionally. And I, I kid you not, if it, if you want to get upset and just see how ridiculous the writing is of this movie, it's watch the first forty five minutes. So the first forty five minutes, you get introduced to Nicolas Cage, who lost his partner. But then it goes on to the girl, the mother, who gets raped and her daughter. Basically, they're hanging out at some 4th of July party, and they decide to walk home because she's been drinking. And so the daughter and her are just kind of walking, and then they basically get confronted by four dudes. And they beat and rape the mother, and the girl runs away in, in the barn and hides. And, they've, and so she basically is watching her mother this happen to her. Well, mm. that's not the crazy part of the writing. The crazy part of the writing starts when... They arrest the dudes. Nicholas Cage does, of course. And they go – Don Johnson is a lawyer representing the family okay. of the, of the fa- all the all the kids basically who did right. this horrible act. I'm not kidding you. There was – the whole town was like in on her being a whore. It was the weirdest <laughs> thing. And I'm not kidding you. Like when they threw the case out, the whole courtroom started clapping. And people came up to her in the neighborhood. Like even the daughter like, hey, you better tell your whore mother to – do, I'm talking oh, like wow. other kids were telling the daughter this. Mm. And I was sitting there going like, what is going on in this movie? And the judge, like for example, they, it was like a week after the, the rape, Don Johnson's lawyer being, you know, he's the lawyer, so he's always the bad guy. And he like speeds up the trial to be a week later and requires the woman to be on stand. And somehow, like, I feel like that would never happen in a rape case, ever. <laughs> and unless it's like, you know you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, if yeah. she's beaten and she has a scarf, they made her remove the scarf and the oh. glasses, and like in front of everybody, I'm okay. like, they would never do this in the court. And there was this was like the pre-jury thing. Oh, okay. This is before like the actual court case started. Oh, okay. And basically, it was every single thing you could see throwing shade at this poor woman. It was happening. Like people, like the mom of the one, two, two of the rapists were like, "You whore," and like all this stuff about her being because their side of the <laughs> story. They were allowed in the yeah. The it made, it, yeah it made, okay. Like it was just basically <laughs> making you upset, and I was like, "This is the craziest thing." Yeah. And of course, uh, Nicholas Cage character goes down. Like, it didn't really tell you why he does it. He just starts killing him, and it wasn't. It really <laughs> fell flat. And uh, I, see that that's a lot because you. You have a tendency to skew towards his movies a lot, like you like them. I do, and I was really disappointed because there wasn't like – it said a love story, so there was no physical love in the movie. And they chose to do things as the pacing just kind of off. And like literally Nicolas Cage is in the movie for I would say 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. And the rest is more of the girl and like people calling her a whore the whole time. That's ba- that, that was that's the movie. And then the end. And this is so funny. As when we first when I first started, I was watching it with Holly, and I said, "Why would they even stay in this town if people are clapping at your you know arrangement or whatever you call it of like they're they're happy that these dudes got off?" Did they say the name of the town? No. Like, is it like? I mean, it was. I, it, I'm not t- kidding you. Everyone in the town seemed to hate this woman, and there was no need to hate her. Okay. And it was just really bizarre. And I was like, I would leave immediately. I would yeah. not want to be part of this town. And then, of course, at the end of the movie, they're leaving town. And I was like, oh, now they finally smarted up. Yeah. Like, and uh, well, what's, what's strange too is Nicholas Cage's character was killing these people, but they wasn't. They weren't interpreting. They weren't sending the signal to the mother. Like you didn't see her react to it about okay. these people dying because they were harassing her for some reason. After they got off the rape, they kept her right. Like they killed the cat. Oh I mean, like, I'm telling you, it was really wow. weird writing. The writing of the whole deal didn't make any sense. But you can stream it on Netflix if you want to waste <laughs> a couple hours. And Nicolas Cage doesn't go crazy. That's what I was like, way for him to go vengeance, so, vengeance, like, you know, doing crazy things, killing these people. No, it's like every death scene is probably two minutes long. But is the mom promiscuous in the beginning? Is that where she gets the rap? Or? No. So there's no lead into that at all. No, it's like, literally she's dating a guy, and actually she's you see her being a good mom because her daughter's on the roof watching the fireworks. She's like, "Get down! Like you can't be up there." 
And then they're on the what walk at home. They even tell the guy, the, the boyfriend was going to drive home. He's like, no, you've been drinking. It's not safe to drive. We're going to walk home. We'll be fine. And then they, she then runs into four dudes from the neighborhood. who I mean, then, like, they try to portray these guys as, like, lowest of the low. And uh, it's really, I mean, like, the writing is so bad. And it seemed like it was rushed. That's the only thing. I bet if Nicolas Cage directed it, it would have been A+. Plus. Oh, has he, has he directed anything? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. I'm curious to know that. Because he certainly has uh, interesting interpretation to a lot of his characters. And I don't think that's directed. I think that's coming from him. Yeah. So uh, yeah, maybe we need to see that. Yeah, he's been, I mean, he's an... He's a good actor. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> that's why I was kind of disappointed. The writing, yeah. though, I'm not kidding you. Like the, the movie, when the movie ended, I go, wait a second, what? That's it? Because they literally had a conversation with Don Johnson. Because Don Johnson, I thought he was going to kill Don because Don was just a bad lawyer. He's a mean yeah. guy. And no, literally at the end, uh, they had like one of those philosophical moments when they're talking. And he's like, you know, I'm a lawyer and, and you know, I'm allowed to do these things because that's my job. And you have a job and you did your job. Mm-hmm. Kind of like reflecting, like, I know you killed those people. And he is maybe you maybe one day I'll represent you, and that was like the philosophical <laughs> look at it. And then I'm not kidding you, in this thousand dollar suits, a guy Don gets on a motorcycle. Boop, boop, oh, awesome! And well, just rides he, he, off. He's Don Johnson. He I know, that. but you're like, this has why? Why is this in this movie? And why are they having this conversation? Oh. I thought he was gonna kill him. I was like waiting <laughs> for that to happen, but it didn't happen. But which just sucks. But we gotta take a break. Yeah, you listen to the tickets. So when we come back. We're going to play the game, right? Yes, sir. Movie seen it. We'll we'll see how this goes. Yeah. And they're also giving away tickets still. Don't forget, you can always call in. If you're listening on the podcast right now or watching on YouTube and you want to make fun of us or do whatever, get involved. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter, the Ticket Step Podcast. You can call in and even be on the air with us through recording, of course, 936-647-3776. We always love when people call in. And uh, if you've seen Vengeance or if you've seen Parallel, let us know what of our reviews. I'm telling you, Vengeance, a love story. It's just probably that's it's already on my disappointment, mainly because it could have been so good. Uh, yeah. I mean, you had Nicolas Cage on set for you know a couple weeks, so you could have done something great. <laughs> but thanks for joining us right now. We'll be back after a bit. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday, your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, Zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Welcome back to the Ticket Stub. It is that time again where we play a game. I think we play a game every Thursday, don't we? It's not every Thursday, but we should. Unless this goes horribly wrong like a train yeah. wreck, but we'll see. But this is movie Seen It. So if you guys have the game Seen It at home, because I'm pretty sure a lot of people do. This is the second edition, so this is really old, and I don't know. What, oh, I do have it. Well, 2007. It's not that old. But uh, so it's basically just movie trivia questions that we're going to be asking each other to test our movie knowledge. Okay. And, I mean, I, I, that is it. I do. I do know a little obscure knowledge about film. Well, but... these this is these cards are obscure, but okay. we've each chosen four cards. You got to trust me. It is it random. I mean, I didn't rig this up. I know I brought the game, but I didn't rig it up. I, I know you need to tell of... me that because I know Connor cheats every <laughs> single time I do this. Yeah. Watching you, Connor. So, I guess I will ask Dick a question you... first. Here. All right, yeah. All well, right. The, this is gonna, this is gonna be great. I don't I don't even know which is hardest. What? Okay. Oh God. So we're doing four questions. Yeah, you make said? sure make sure you cover the back of your card because the answers are uh, on there when you read it. All right. All I, right. I picked I took pictures of my cards. This is question one. Okay. Who wrote and directed Clerks, Mallrats, and Chasing Amy? Kevin Smith. That is correct. 
Okay, so I ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, that's weird. What's 2002 supernatural thriller involves a creepy well, a creepy girl, and a creepy videotape? Oh, the ring. No. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your face. Jeez. Oh man. All it's right. one to one. This is very serious. All right. What 1982 comedy has a character named Michael claiming that he was a strong enough? Yeah, he was strong enough to be the what? What in the world? Hey, he, read, read this yeah, before talking. He was strong enough to be the woman that was the best part of my manhood. You so understand? what? 1992. 1982. Oh, Tootsie. That is correct. Boom! Boom! Boy. All right. Oh. Oh, wow, this is going to be interesting. Okay. What 1997 Oscar-winning movie's tagline was, Brace yourself for Melvin. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. That's that's hard. Uh, 1997 Oscar-winning movie's tagline. Oh, my goodness. Brace yourself for Melvin. Oh, uh, Office Space? No, uh, incorrect. It was as good as it gets. What? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. That was, that was okay. hard. All right. All right. What kind of blues did high school football footballer James Vanderbeek have in – oh, my God. Come on, read this question I know, again. I know. What kind of blues did high schooler footballer James Vanderbeek have according to the title of a 1999 movie? Oh, man. I went blank. Oh. Is it Varsity Blues? Uh, it is Varsity Blues. Okay. Oof. I was scared. I did not know that one, but I, I'm a good guesser. All right, so this is going to be great. This is, this is the fan favorite one right here. Uh-huh. You ready? No. What 1998 movie stars Kevin Spacey as a police officer who must defuse a hostage situation brought on by Samuel L. Jackson, a fellow officer who has been framed for murder? Oh, I, I really like that movie. It's The Negotiator. All right. Yes. You got it. Right. There you go. Okay. I Please. forgot about that movie. That movie yeah. actually did, did, did. It was actually pretty. It it's, reminded me of like Phone Booth and all that kind of those kind of movies where it's just one set. Who produced, starred in, and sang the theme song for the 1979 movie The Main Event? <laughs> the Main Event. <laughs> That's so hard. The Main Event. The Main Event. Man, these are hard. I'm gonna say uh, Neil Diamond. It's Barbara Streisand. Oh, tried. Yeah. Yeah. Tried. Yeah. All right. What actor played characters named Farmer Ted, Brian Johnson, and Gary Wallace in 80s teen comedies? I mean, I mean you just what, what actor? What actor played the following characters that are named Farmer Ted, Brian Johnson, and Gary Wallace? I, uh, I have... Uh, just name an 80s actor. Uh, George Went. No, Anthony Michael Hall. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> this is real thrilling. Yes, this is we're, so we're, thrilling. We're neck and neck, and I have forgotten how many questions we've asked already. All right. What futuristic movie stars Arnold Schwarzenegger as a wrongly convicted man who must survive a deadly sadistic game show? Oh, The Running Man. Yeah, I think I keep picking the easy one. All right, let's do one more question each. All right. Okay. So the bottom one's the hard one? Uh, I think that's the easy one. All right, so the top one is the hard one? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do the top one. I'm going to make it hard. Okay. Oh, interesting. Who plays the man who has who has to convince fellow jurors E.G. Marshall, Jack Klugman, and Jack Warden of an accused man's innocence in the 1957 movie. Which actor? Yeah, who plays the man? So which actor? Jason Robards. Really? Is that right? It's Henry Fonda. 12 Angry Men. Oh, well, he was in that too. Jason Robards was in that. Yeah, movie. but who plays a character who's trying to convince everybody? Well, not Jason Robards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> All right, I'm next. All right, one more. Who directed the Clint Eastwood Spaghetti Westerns, A Fistful of Dollars, 
for a few dollars more. Sergio Leone? That is hey. correct, yes. Leone? Well, I think you handily beat me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This random random stuff I know. Okay. I can't believe I didn't get the Barbara Streisand. I'm such a big fan of hers. Are you really? I can't. No, I'm not. That's, of course <laughs> I didn't get that one. That was stupid. We're going to take a quick break here on uh, the Ticket Sub. We just did a little game that I crushed it. Yeah, he crushed it. Crushed a it. A game that we will never be playing again. Well, no, Connor always adds the spice. He does. To everything. Yeah. We're just the base ingredients. He's yeah. the one that makes it taste good. I know it. Right? You're yeah. listening to Ticket Stuff here on Lone Star Community Radio. Don't forget, we're on social media, Twitter, Facebook. Let us know what's going on. You can always call in, message line, 936-647-3776. Even when you're listening to the podcast, that's a 24-hour, seven days a week number. We'll be back after a couple of messages. Let's begin now. Hey guys, this is Connor. This is Dick. This is Chris. And we're with the Ticket Stub Podcast every Thursday live at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area. Also, anytime at IRLoneStar.com. You go to IRLoneStar.com backslash TTS. You can find all of our social media. And don't forget, we give away two tickets to the Grand Theater on every show. If you like movies and you like complaining or celebrating anything that has to do with the silver screen, Check out the Ticket Stub podcast and join us every Thursday at noon o'clock on Lone Star Community Radio. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Welcome back to the Ticket Stub here on Lone Star Community Radio, IRLoneStar.com. We're here every Thursday live. We're going to be wrapping up the show. we got about six minutes left. Thanks for joining us. We're sitting here with Chris Appel. Yep. And uh, we did our movie reviews. We saw some really crappy movies. Actually, I did. Sorry. Did yep. not no, mean to wrap you up in that good, one. Yeah. Uh, but now uh, I do have some controversial questions I've been thinking about. All right. And because I know uh, last week we kind of didn't really touch on the Golden Globes, and I was really curious why uh, the directing category didn't have the lady who did Lady Bird, even though Lady Bird was nominated for so many different other positions. Mm-hmm. It's kind of strange that they just, she wasn't nominated for Best Director. Uh, I mean, and a lot of, you know, the politic way of saying it was all those other directors have been in, in the business, so they have the cred, and so it's like, you don't get on your first try, son, kind of thing. Right. Uh, but going on by that another movie that has been looked over is a movie called call me by your name mm-hmm. and what's funny is when i saw that i'd never heard of this movie i didn't see any advertising without it being part of the campaign to you know vote for this movie or whatever in the award stuff and i kind of actually i confused it with the japanese movie animation movie called i think it's called your name which apparently was like really good okay. and so i got confused but then i started looking at this movie and i saw it as your your typical romantic coming of age film but it made me think because it's about two men it's about a young boy 17 and an older man Mm -hmm. i was like can you imagine if they did a movie like this but the young role was a female and the old role was a dude and like i don't think that would fly too well i think that's i think they've done movies where it's the other reverse where it's a young man and older woman they you know there's mrs robinson basically that's the graduates like known for that but actually he was older though because he was graduating college, wasn't it? If I remember that correctly, I that's well, he looked older. Yeah, so, there's that. Yeah, but this movie apparently is really well done, well acted, all that kind of stuff, and it's been looking over. And I, and, you know, some people they didn't dare say it was political because it's. I mean, they probably would have done that 12 years ago, 15 years ago. But today, I was like, I wonder why they think that's okay. If they, but I can totally see if they made it that way, it wouldn't be okay. Do you think it's because it could? And I haven't not seen the film, but. It, it could be, like, too much of, a, like, a, you know, trying too hard to go that direction. You know what I mean? Like, too hard to be, like, today's current times and, you know, things that happen. Well, I think it's also telling the story of the – someone telling a story that we've all kind of known in a bit. We've seen it before, a young man, a young person meeting an older person, they kind of coming of age. I, I've and, never seen that. You've never seen that in a movie ever? Oh, before? a movie. Oh, you're talking about a movie? I thought you were talking about real life. Uh, oh, no, oh I, no. Of course, that never happens in real life. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, like, that, it's just the way they tell a story, and that's why this movie's getting a lot of props, I bet, because it's like kind of a well-crafted movie. Mm-hmm. 
But imagine trying to make a well crafted movie with a young lady without like I mean Lolita is like the number one movie I can think of that that has the same kind of plot and it's been regarded yeah. as Ugh. well. Uh, American Beauty was kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And look at how that turned out. <laughs> that movie's so weird. <laughs> but uh, but no, I just I just thought about it, and I would love to know y'all, y'all uh, the audience's perspective on yeah. it. You know, with movies trying like an independent movie trying to change the way you know way way we see movies and seeing a movie like that be nominated, it's like the stereotypical Oscar movie that has this kind of taboo thing. I think I think there's a lot of those movies out there. They're just not in the mainstream. Oh, like, no. There's a ton on Netflix and Amazon, stuff like that, all exactly like that. Well, uh, so, I'll be interested. If you want to call in, 936-647-3776. Uh, give us your opinion on our social media, because I'm wondering what's going to come out in 2018 that's really going to push, push the social reflection mm-hmm. of that kind of stuff. Uh, another thing, I, before we close out the show, I wanted to get Chris's opinion on this. Uh, movie okay. theater attendance in 2017 was the worst in 24 years. This is from ScreenCrush.com. Uh, it, it's a rough estimate, of course, but it is the lowest since 1993 when Jurassic Park was the top grossing film. So it gives you an idea. 1993 had some really good movies. Yeah, it did. Uh, but saying it's the lowest, is that something economic-wise or is that something industry-wise? No, that n- number is not entirely accurate. Okay. Um, I think we're down only like 4% year over year. Uh, but you have to remember that movie theaters have started putting in the recliners, mm-hmm. and so their seat count capacity has gone down yes. tremendously. And there was a huge push last year to get all those recliners in, and each movie theater cut their attendance capability down by half. So... There's Courses. not as many seats, so you're having places like, you know, or, or different movie theaters that are selling out at like 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon for all of their evening sets that early. So walking up, people can't, they can't see it. I had a discussion with the, I'm not going to name the theater, but it was another theater in the area, uh, and he was saying that, you know, people would come to see like um, the, uh, oh, I forget the name of the movie. But he would say, okay, we don't have it today. A vengeance, it's a love so- story. Yeah. It's sold out today for every show. It's sold out tomorrow for every show. It's sold out for – you can see it like next Thursday or something like that. And so Jeez. so that probably has a lot to do with that. I believe that because there's really not a theater. The only theater I know is your theater and then Silverado. I know it's not called Silverado anymore over in Tomball, but that was the only theater Regal, I've been yeah, in. That's a has, Regal theater now. That has several seats. Like it has, I mean there's like stadium-style seating yeah. in that one. But that makes a lot of sense, and that's funny to me because I didn't even think about them cutting down. Most theaters are cutting it down, and ha- like basically cut it in half. Well, most of the time for any, any given weekend, you wouldn't need every seat in the auditorium. But when you have like Star Wars, when you have out, a show that people oh, want to yeah. see, especially no. this is about attendance. This is about money. Sure, this is about attendance. So I mean, knowing getting people in the seats, maybe that's why because the the rush only can get half people, and people aren't going to wait three weeks. They'll find. So I guess I don't know, but I mean. I, I think people still go to the theaters. Oh, definitely, definitely. And I know my parents still go. I mean, that's like their date thing. So. Yeah. Oh, you should have seen us over Christmas time. I mean, yeah. well, Connor was there like every day, so he can tell you. Yeah. It's just well, massive, man. massive. Do we crowd. ever still have that trash bomb? Uh, we, you know, we were working on it. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> some of the guys watched the show last week from not not the trash bag guys, but some of the other managers. So they said they were going to mention it to the. Yeah. The trash guy. I think he was just he was he was hearing things. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But uh, we want to say, Chris, it was good to see you, man. Yes, sir. We're wrapping up the show. Hopefully, Connor returns next Thursday. We don't know what that guy's doing, but he's probably on Twitter. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, you he can follow us on Twitter. <laughs> we're on social media. This is the Ticket Sub. We're here every Thursday. We're going to be reviewing a new movie uh, next week and uh, giving away tickets always to the Grand Theater, which includes oh, uh, Movie a... Tavern. And yes. uh, who won? Yeah, you have that? Yeah, I do have it. Whew, yeah. Almost forgot that. If I can. But we'll, we'll let Chris. Unlock my phone. We're gonna let Chris look that up. But right now, just to let people know is you can win tickets to the Grand, which also includes the movie tavern. Uh, what is the official? Wh- where can I use those tickets? Uh, the tickets you can use them in any Grand theater. So anywhere in the country you have a Grand theater, you can yeah. use them. And movie tavern as well. There's a lot of movie taverns up in Dallas. We've got two in the Houston area. Yeah, so you can and, win and really tickets every week. We give away. Uh, I think we're gonna start doing a question. And now that's going to start next Thursday. So for right now, if you want to win those tickets, you just call in 936-647-3776. Give us your insights of our thoughts, but also just say you want the tickets. Make sure you leave your name and uh, the phone number that we can call you back and, and say this, you won. this week's winner is Clifton Wolgamuth. 
Man, I'm telling you, just plow through the names. I did. No, you had some doubt. You're like, Wilgamuth. Well, we'll just call him Clifton. <laughs> Way so to go, Congratulations. Clifton. Yes. There you go. And uh, we'll reach out to you and get those tickets in your hands for the Grand Theater and also Movie Tavern. This is the Ticket Stub. Don't forget, if you're just now joining us, we podcast this show so you can listen on replay. Podcast drops on Fridays at 8 a.m. And then YouTube will shortly follow after that at some point. But uh, most importantly, 8 a.m. tomorrow morning for the podcast. You're listening to Morning's Alone. Nope. I just, did oh. my, I just did my show, my morning yeah. show. I'm sorry. The Ticket Stub with Chris and I. And uh, we'll see you later. Thank you for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station. Don't forget to check out this show and many others across the Lone Star Community Radio Network. Either live on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, the Lone Star Internet Radio app, or IRLoneStar.com's live audio stream, and on replay on podcast, Channel 12's Our City TV and Conroe, or Channel 21 KVQT in Houston, and of course their YouTube channel. This production is copyrighted and all rights are reserved by Lone Star Community Radio. Have a question regarding this program or other Lone Star Community Radio shows? Want to sponsor or start your own show? Call the station message line at 936-647-3776 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.